Hey everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode in my two-player tank game tutorial series. Today is going to be a UI day because we'll be adding in all of the UI. We'll be adding the adjuster down here. I don't know what it's really called, but the thing where you can adjust the power level and we'll be adding in health so that way you have three times of being hit and then there'll be a game over screen. Don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing and leave a comment down below. So in UI, we have a couple of new costumes. So we have zero, then one, then two, and then three. It's just a health bar. Zero has all black, one has just one tank, two has two tanks, and then three has three tanks. And make sure you start at zero and then go one, two, three. Then we have arrow, lines, and then all the line animation, and then shadow, which I showed last episode. Then we have player one and player two, which is the same as the turn sprite, and then outline, which is the same as outline sprite. We have game over one, which is for player one winning, game over two for player two winning, and then background as a background. So those are the new costumes. And as always, if you'd like to use my exact brights and stuff check out the link in the description below so let's go ahead and make the ui make a bunch of clones so to do this we need to go ahead and add a when i receive start game we need a new for the sprite only variable called id now this is going to keep track of what ui element it is so we can click ok here hide that variable and now set the brand new id variable to Let's do arrow R for right. Now create a clone of myself. Next, duplicate this and then do arrow L for the left arrow. Next, go ahead and do line for the kind of line things that are right here. Next, we have shadow. So these are the shadows of the thingy. So this kind of will make the UI pop out. Then we have turn. So that's the player one or player two up here. Next, we have health. After that, we want game over. So this is the game over screen. Then we have background, which is the background of the game over and then at the very end let's go ahead and duplicate this and take out the create clone of myself and then set the id to sprite now let's go ahead and do when i receive clear clones we want to go ahead and make a block called clear clones like so and then click run screen without refresh now we want to clear clones when i receive clear clone now we want to repeat 10 times delete this clone okay so now that we have the setup let's go ahead and make these clones pop up so at a when i start as a clone then a hide right here to make sure that they're all hid now we can do and if else checking if the id is the arrow r now make sure these match so you can copy and paste that in there so if it's the arrow right then we can switch costume to the arrow because this is the right one we can point in direction 90. last but not least we want to go to 215 negative 145. now let's go ahead and make this show so when i receive next turn we want to go ahead and just do show so you should see now that all of these clones are just gonna pop up on screen and there we go you can see one right there and then they're all overlapping and the the reason we can't see the arrow is because it's behind. So we need to add another when I start as a clone over here, then a forever loop, and then if else, checking if the ID is equal to shadow, which is behind. We want to just go to front and then go backwards 10 layers so it's kind of behind the UI. Otherwise, we can just simply go to front. So let's go ahead and test this out now. Once the turn starts, here we go. Look at that. The arrow that we just created pops up, and then all of these ones are here. Now let's make the arrow actually change the power and all that stuff. So we want to add a forever loop then a change y by now go ahead and add a minus here and then a divided by with the minus in the left side and we can go ahead and do divided by two in a y position in the right side now we just want to make this go to negative 145 and then make it move up if we're touching the mouse pointer so what you can do is just do a plus with the position we want to go to which is negative 145 then we want to go ahead and do distance to mouse pointer less than 30 which will do a true and a false then to make it into a number take that times five so if we aren't near the mouse pointer it'll be zero otherwise it'll be five so now just add that to the negative 145 so that should make it to where when we hover over the arrow it'll kind of do a little animation there we go look at that now let's check if the distance to mouse pointer is less than 30 then we want to go ahead and broadcast turn animation so that later down the road will make the lines animate now we want to check if the turn is player one then we change the player one power by one otherwise if the turn is player two over here here, we change the player two power by one so let's go ahead and full screen this and test it out we hover over the arrow here it'll change the power by one now i actually forgot to add the mouse down so you actually have to click on add an and in this distance to mouse pointer and then a mouse down so it won't do anything now but then once we click here we go it makes it go up now let's do the exact same thing for the left arrow so duplicate this whole entire if else and now check if the id is arrow l then we want to do all that and then point in direction negative 90 so that way 
it's to the left. Then we also want to go to negative 215, so that way it's on the left side of the screen instead of the right. And last but not least, we want to just change the player 1 power by negative 1, otherwise the player 2 power by negative 1. So let's go ahead and see if this worked. Yep, we have another arrow, and if we hover over, it does an animation, and it will change the power by a negative number, so we can go up and down now. Alrighty, that is looking a bit better. Okay, now let's work on the line. Add another if else and this else over here and check if the ID is equal to line. So if the clone is lines, then we can switch costume to, you guessed it, the line. Then we'll want to go to 0, negative 145. So you can now see that the lines will pop up right here. Look at that. That looks very cool. Then add another if else here and go ahead and check if the ID is equal to the shadow. Then we want to switch costume to the shadow and go to 0, negative 145. Next, if the ID is equal to turn, then we want to switch costume to player 1 as a default and go to x, negative 200, y, 165. So you can now see that we're going to have a overlap of the clones here. And that's because we still have the old turn sprite. So what we can do is click onto the turn and then pull this when I receive next turn into the UI and just plop that down there. And now that we've done that, you go ahead and click the delete button on the old turn. And now you can see once we start here, the turn should pop up there and it does the cool little animation still. Now let's make this only happen for a couple of the clones. So add an if around this and then an or and check if the ID is equal to lines of course or is equal to the turn or the ID is equal to health. So now you can see that there's no overlap because we deleted the old turn sprite. Now the health isn't in the right position so add an if else in here and check if the ID is equal to health. Then we want to go ahead and take out the switch costume to and go to 160 165 then we want to make it switch to the health of whatever players turn it is so add an if else in a forever loop inside of the health and check if the turn is equal to player one so if it's player one then we want to switch to the player one health so switch costume two and then in the else switch costume two now we don't actually have the health variables yet so click onto the player and make a for the sprite only variable called health and that will keep track of the health now we can go ahead and set that health to three in the very beginning here. And now all you need to do is go ahead and duplicate that set to three and then pull that into player two and it'll automatically create the health and then make sure you set it to three in the reset. Now in the UI, we can switch costume to the backdrop number of stage and change this to of player one and then do the health of player one and then the health of player two if it's player two. If we go into player one and then change the health by negative one, you can see that that didn't quite work. That's because we need to offset it by one. Go ahead and add one to both of these. If we start this and then go into player one and change the health by negative one, you can see that it goes by one and then ticks down to zero. And if we go ahead and shoot and then switch to player two turn, you can see that it's three now because it's the player two's health instead of player one. Now add another if else in here and check if the ID is equal to the outline. Go to the middle of the screen, which is zero, zero. Switch costume to, you guessed it, the outline forever. Go to front and then show up here. Now now you can go ahead and delete the outline sprite and then if we start the game you can see that we don't have an outline anymore so the reason that this doesn't work is because we don't create the outline till we start the game when i receive reset we want to duplicate the set id and create clone of myself and just set the id to outline and then create a clone of myself now you can see that if we do that here we go the outline pops right back and it's all layered correctly but we don't have that extra sprite in here and now add another if else and check if the id is equal to game over because that's what we named it in the beginning go to zero zero switch costume to game over one and then go ahead and hide last but not least if id is equal to background you can change that to a normal if since this is the last one go to zero zero switch costume to background you can see now that the background is kind of shown that's because we have it showing on the next turn right here so we need to condition that if the id not equal to go ahead and add an or in here the id is not equal to sprite or the id is not equal equal to the game over or the ID is not equal to background. You should see that the background doesn't show and all of our UI looks good. Now let's make the turn work. So add a when I receive next turn, if the ID is equal to turn, switch costume to the turn. Like so. Repeat 10 times instead of just doing it once. It'll do player one. I can shoot. It'll switch to player two. Now let's make it to where the lines will animate once we change the power level. Remember that broadcast message turn animation? All you need to do is do a when I receive turn animation if the id is equal to lines so that way only the lines does this we want to switch costume
zoom to the lines then we want to wait 0 0.09 seconds so that way there's some delay duplicate this again and now do lines 2 and then wait 0 0.08 seconds duplicate this again and then do line 3 wait 0 0.07 seconds duplicate this switch costume to lines 5 and let's just do wait 0 0.05 seconds so hopefully now you can see that once we do this it kind of does a cool animation look at that it'll do like out and then it'll switch in we have a slight issue you can see that we can actually go into the negative numbers which breaks our number system and we can go past 100 which really is not necessary so let's limit that so check if player one power is less than one in a normal if statement then we want to set the player one power to one now check if it is greater than 100 then we can go ahead and set it to 100 now we need to do the same thing for player two so duplicate both of those and now check if the player two power is less than one then set the player two power to one check if the player two power is greater than 100 and set the player two power to 100 so now you can see that there's a limit we cannot go past 100 or below zero so you can see here it's 100 or if we go down it is one if we are holding it down we can still technically go into the negatives as you can see here because it just kind of breaks for a second so the way to fix that is add a when i receive the tick players and i'll put that limit in there like so now you can see that it will stop perfectly at one so we can do this it's one or if we go all the way up to 100 there you go it stops perfectly at 100 let's set the power to a really high number for testing and look at that it goes really far and then once it goes to player one it's back to 50 because that's the player one power now let's go ahead and make it to where we can actually lose the game so at a when i receive a new message called game over so this is once one of the player loses we want to check if the id is equal to the game over so that way only the game over can do this then we want to go ahead and make a variable for all sprites called game over then we want to go ahead and show set the size to 200 percent and then check if backdrop number of stage and changes to player one and check if the health of the player one is less than one if that means that the player one is dead then we want to switch to game over two which as you can see the game over two costume says player two win otherwise we want to switch costume to game over one that way it says player one has won now forever we want to go to front and then change the size by a divided by and a minus in one of them divide that by two put size in the right side and then put the size you want it to go to in here which i'll do 100 so let's test this out by starting the game and now broadcast the game over as you can see it kind of pops up and it says player one win now let's go ahead and add a win i receive game over once again so this is going to be for the background check if the id is equal to background so that way only the background can do this then we want to go ahead and show forever go to front and then go backwards one layer now if we broadcast game over you can see that a background pops up and it says player one wins now here's how we can know when the game is over inside of the backdrop we have this repeating till no condition so we can add a condition which is if the health of player one or two is down so we're going to repeat until pull a the backdrop number of stage and changes to player one and now do health so repeat until the health of player one is less than one which means player one's dead or health of player two is less than one then once it is we can broadcast game over then wait three seconds so the display will pop up stop other scripts and sprite and then it'll start back at the beginning as you can see if we go ahead and go into player one and then change the health by negative one it should say player two wins okay player two wins there we go then after three seconds here we go it starts a brand new game where everything is reset say we were to go ahead and do that in player two instead this time it says player one wins and then after three seconds it restarts the game now we just need to make it to where you take damage if you get hit by a bullet in player one when i receive the start game forever if we are touching the bullet then we want to change health by negative one then we want to wait zero seconds then we want to go ahead and wait until not touching the bullet that way we can't just instantly take more damage now pull that into player two so now you can see that if i can manage to hit one of the tanks it'll damage it maybe if i set it to 72 hopefully it'll hit it here we go look at that the player two lost one health and then it'll work the exact same way for player one now let's make the shooting look a bit better so we want to go ahead and in the player one when i receive the shoot effects which is a brand new broadcast we want to check if the is clone is equal to true because the barrel is the clone then we'll want to go ahead and set make another for the sprite only variable called barrel knockback then we want to set that barrel knockback to negative 15 now in the main loop here after turn we want to move the barrel 
knockback step. Then we want to make sure to add friction to that right here. Set the barrel knockback to barrel knockback times a number smaller than one. Let's do 0 0.9. You need to set the barrel knockback to zero and then when I start as a clone. And our barrel seems to have disappeared. So add it, go to front and then go backwards one layer right here. So go ahead and do the same thing in player two. So to do that, go ahead and pull that set barrel knockback and then the move barrel knockback and then this right here, the when I receive shoot effects and put it in here. So set there and then the move there. Don't forget to set the barrel knockback to zero in the beginning. Now this isn't going to do anything yet because we never broadcast shoot effects. So broadcast the shoot effect here. Now in player two, also broadcast the shoot effect right here. So hopefully now if we test this out, you can see that the barrel does a cool animation. It's kind of hard to see because we move our camera. The way you can test that is just take out this if follow bullet and then put that in there. And now you can see if I test this out, there we go, it does a cool knockback animation. And it will do the exact same thing for player two. Now let's add one more little polish effect. We can add some camera shake. So in the camera, go ahead and when I receive camera shake, we can go ahead and make a for the sprite only variable called shake power. We can set that shake power to seven, then repeat 15 times. Another for all sprite variable called shake, and then set that new shake variable that we just made to the shake power and then we want to multiply the shake power by pick random negative one to one so that way randomly can be negative then change the shake power itself by shake power divided by five times negative one so that way it'll slowly get smaller and fade out then we want to set the shake to zero in the very end now this isn't actually going to do anything yet so here's how we make it do something see where we do minus scroll x and scroll y for the turn is player one we want to do minus scroll x plus that shake and then same for the y so duplicate that plus take out the scroll x and then do plus scroll y and i can go ahead and delete these two because those are for the player two and now put that new scroll x and shake in those and do not forget to add a when i receive reset set that shake to zero otherwise your camera will try to run away from you so you can now see that if we start the game and broadcast the camera shake woo that does nothing wahoo that's because i set the shake power right here instead of setting the shake now you can see if we go ahead and start this kind of makes our camera shake let's make it like 25 and now you can see it kind of shakes a bit more now in the bullets right here where it hits the ground broadcast camera shake let's hope that this works so if i go ahead and start the game and then shoot Wow, that didn't work. That didn't actually work because we need to add the shake and stuff in the bullet as well. So right here where we do minus scroll X and scroll Y for the follow bullet, duplicate that scroll X plus shake and all that stuff and then a scroll Y in there as well. And now you can see if I go ahead and shoot my bullet, it will shake the screen quite a bit. We need to tone that down, change the shake power to seven. And now you can see that if we try that, here we go, it just does a nice little shake, which makes it feel more impactful. Awesome, this is looking really cool. Okay, there's an issue that once in a while, our barrel doesn't show. So maybe if we try taking out that go backwards one layer, it'll fix it up. Okay, so I figured out the issue. It's because it is being hidden by this script right here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take out this set player one shown and this right here and now just put that big long thing in there and now put that underneath the go to so now you can see that the tank barrel is no longer hidden all of the time so that's fantastic but the layering is slightly incorrect so go to front and then go backwards five layers maybe that'll make it work okay here we go the tank barrel is working so let's go ahead and do the same thing for player two so take this out get rid of the set player one shown get rid of that move that underneath here and now put that there now also do go to front and then go backwards one layer right here okay so now if we go ahead and test it out you can now see that both of the barrels are shown correctly the animations work and both of the barrels are shown so thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the last episode in my two-player tank game tutorial series make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing and anyway this has been owen and i am out